Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. Man, I'm breaking out of bite-sized pieces. Today, we have some concerning news about some banks who just don't get it and like to shut down accounts for people who are investing in a cryptocurrency. So we'll take a look at HSBC. Uh, those are ones that just don't get it. And a couple of banks that just finally figured it out. So we'll take a look at those two stories. And finally, we'll finish off with NY Dig brings Bitcoin to a $6 trillion global insurance industry called Liberty Mutual and New York Life. So these are two big ones today, but let's first take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is April 9th. It is uh, 2 p.m. Uh, El Paso, Texas time. Beautiful day, about 85 degrees. Nice day and good day to be out here in the uh, in the office. So what do we got? Well, the market cap has been teetering around two trillion, eh, something like 1.99, 2.1, whatever. Doesn't really matter. Uh, the big thing here is that I like these days. I like these days when things are just kind of going sideways or a little bit down, a little bit up, because the dollar cost average, it's a great day. When things go up, I mean, I feel good because like my portfolio goes up, but in all honesty, um, and it's weird to think about, but these days I really like when things go down because I'm like, oh, great. Because all those automatic orders that I have already just sitting there waiting to buy the cryptocurrency, I'm going to get it at a discount. And it's just awesome. And it's just great to feel that, that way that, Hey, if it goes up, uh, portfolio is going doing good, it goes down. Well, I'm going to pick up some cheap, uh, cryptocurrency. Anyhow, that's pretty much going on. And then we can see that in what's going on with the actual, uh, crypto market and the coins. Let me blow this up so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, you've got, uh, oops, we got Bitcoin. You've got, uh, where are we at? Bitcoin is at 0.89% up. Wow. Ethereum 0.35, Binance coin 4%, 32% for the week though. That's pretty good. Then 73% for XRP. Watch out. Congratulations, XRP holders. And then everything's just pretty much sideways, except for like, well, let's see, Filecoin went up massively, uh, 11% in 24 hours, which is weird because everything else is kind of taking a big dive. 40% almost for VeChain, congratulations. And um, those are the big ones, 27% for Tezos. So the thing I wanna, wanna make mention of is a, first of all, a couple of things. Let's take a look at the projected range for what could be be like the next breakout over the next hour. If you're a trader, look at Digital Note, Komodo, Basic Tension Token, Elrond, and Genesis, and Quant. Looks like there's, this is a, with 90% accuracy because of Trade the Chain, link in the description. You can get a 14-day trial. Uh, it's got 11%. Up in the next hour, three percent, three percent, whatever, whatever. I'm not a big trader, but that looks pretty good to me. That's the first thing. Second thing I want to talk to you about is this, and that is, you know, we just took a look at Filecoin and it went up massively. That's one of those that I was this close to pulling the trigger on and adding it to my portfolio. I just didn't do it. Something happens, gets in my way, and I know that you probably sitting there have probably missed out on some crypto or digital asset that you should have gotten into, but you just didn't do it. And uh, you probably feel like, damn it, I, I missed it out. Here's the thing. You'll never hit 100%. You'll never get them all. Just be happy with the ones that you have. This is not financial advice. I'm not a financial planner. But what works for me is I just find, I just invest in people. If the team looks good, the person behind it looks good, the actual token actually does something right, right now and the white paper is relevant and uh, they get some pretty good financial backers, I just go with them all day long, dollar cost average over time usually works out. And that's just all I got. So that's what's going on in the markets. Let's jump back and just talk about what's going on with people like us getting our accounts shut down. This was uh, something on Twitter. I love Twitter. It's easy just to find all the great information that's up to date. I love it. And this was from HSBC. I'm just going to blow this up as much as possible. So what you can see here, it says, dear client, you got to love that HSBC, dear client. We'd like to inform you that HSBC has changed the policy on virtual currencies such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, and others, and products related to or re referencing the performance of a virtual currency. HIDC will not participate in facilitating product related to virtual currencies or products related or referencing to the performance of virtual currencies. So they says our record show, because I thought myself, I'm like, wow, they're going to shut down just like, you know, buying Bitcoin, Ethereum, and stuff like that. Like, no. Our records show that your HSBC Invest Direct account is holding MicroStrategy Inc., a virtual currency product. While we permit the holdings of MicroStrategy to be held and or sold, uh, we're not going to be allowed to actually transfer anything else or um, buy any more else. So that's kind of crazy if you think about it, right? HSBC, whatever. So this bank, just so you know, this was actually brought up in the uh, in the thread itself. Uh, HSBC, 
they're dirty themselves. I mean, they just went through a little scandal. This wasn't too long ago, September 21st, 2020, where they moved vast sums of dirty money on a Ponzi scheme. They actually, first of all, they warned their, everybody about it, like this could be a Ponzi scheme, yet they still transferred all the money and did everything they, they wanted to do. So when you see something like this, when you see these types of, uh, of stories like HSBC and these banks shutting down, look at the banks behind it. Nobody's perfect, right? But you see like an HSBC, I know um, uh, US Bank, they've also shut down some people. PayPal, they shut down before, before they got into it, so good for them. But uh, you take a look at these banks, these are the ones that are gonna get blockbustered. When I say blockbustered, I mean, they're, they're going to let all these different cryptos and digital assets and technology just pass them by, just like what happened with Blockbuster and with Netflix. The smart ones got on board like Disney. Disney figured it out like, okay, look, we can't, we make a boatload of money with all the things that we do as far as bringing people into our attractions, our, our musical parks. Let's get into, you know, the movie industry. Let's get into, let's just buy Marvel. And you know what? Let's also get into the streaming industry because that's where things are going. And it worked out pretty well for them. So like when I saw this, I'm like, geez, unbelievable. So the thing to me is why do some banks do it? Some banks shut them down, but then you got stories like this where banks adopt, uh, crypto and Bitcoin supply crunch. It says this week, Goldman Sachs CEO David Solomon forecast a big evolution of the government's regulations on Bitcoin and crypto, predicting they will continue to evolve. The bank announced last week that Goldman's private wealth management division is close to offering Bitcoin exposure to larger clients with portfolios of 25 million or more. Newsflash, if you don't have 25 million, you can go to any exchange and buy Bitcoin or Ethereum yourself. So don't worry. State Street, the second oldest bank in the U.S., which currently manages 3.1 trillion in assets under management and a staggering 38 trillion in assets under custody, is offering its multi-asset trading platform to Pure Digital. That's a leading crypto trading system for institutions and banks. Great. So State Street now joins BNY Mellon, one of the other oldest banks out there, J.P. Morgan Chase, Citigroup, BNB Pariba, and of course Goldman Sachs to introduce digital assets and they're allowing it and going forward. So it is a weird thing, right? Where you have on one side, you got an HSBC, US bank, or whoever else is, is doing all this crazy stuff where they're stopping people who are doing no problems and buying crypto because they know it's going to go up to you've got this other ones that are just like, you know what? We're totally on board, do whatever you want to. We're going to get on board with you. So these guys will go away and these guys will flourish. And to me, I don't know why they're doing it, why they can't see the future. It's either they see it and they don't want it to actually happen, or they just don't want people because every, crypto is all on a public ledger, right? So some of these places, maybe they don't want you to see what's going on uh, publicly. Maybe they just want to be behind the scenes until uh, you know they get caught and have to pay a little bit of a fine, which is what they call just the cost of doing business. We'll pay a billion to get a couple billion. Anyhow, that's what we have for those uh, little snippets. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Is this right or wrong? And uh, let's move on to our next piece. Unbelievable. All right, next up, and this is another great story about adoption. And the reason why I bring these up is because all the people that have been lied to and that have been told the same song and dance, like you shouldn't get into crypto because it is funding for terrorist organizations and cartels and something stupid like that, right? It's on public ledger, good luck. So when they see these types of things, then they're like, whoa, wait. So all that price appreciation that's happened over the last years, uh, they've been lying to us. And now we've got these old institutions, old institutions, 100 plus years old institutions getting into this. I need to get into this. So all the old money, all the money that's sitting on the sidelines getting into st stuff that should or should not be, again, not financial advice. They're like, you know what? I'm going to get into this. And these are the types of stories that you can tell your parents, grandparents, kids, coworkers, friends, family, everything else. Like, you know what? I'm just telling you what I'm going to do, but look, other big institutions and smart money is getting into it. So maybe you should take a look at that. So that's why I like to do this because I think 2021 is going to be a great year. And these are the stories that will compel people to get into the industry. So what's happening? So NYDIG, 
uh, revealed on Thursday a plan to create Bitcoin powered products and services for the six trillion per year global insurance industry. Uh, they previously raised from New York Life, Mass Mutual, uh, a bunch of money, uh, and now they've raised a hundred million of additional growth capital from Star Insurance and Liberty, <laughs> Liberty, Liberty, right? Ross Stevens, CEO of Stone Ridge and executive chairman at NY Dig, said this. And this was interesting to me. He says, fiat depreciation causes inflation in fiat premiums. So if you take a look at all the quantitative easing and all the money that's being injected into our economies across the world, because the dollar is the US reserve currency, you can see that it actually dilutes the dollar and the purchasing power of the dollar actually goes down. So if that's happening, then the premiums that you're paying, they don't really do too much for these insurance companies. They're like, wow, thanks for giving us this depreciating asset. Maybe if we take these dollars, and this is what Michael Saylor, Michael Strategy said, instead of us just sitting on dollars, Let's put it into something that can actually appreciate or maybe even stabilize called Bitcoin. And we'll just do it like that. And when we need to get into money, we'll get into money or cash when we need to. So this makes sense. Uh, we see a brighter Bitcoin powered future for the billions who depend on the insurance industry uh, every year. So this is also great news, like we just talked about. But I think it kind of goes beyond that. And this is the big picture. The big picture is this. When people tell me, because I'm a big believer in the four-year cycles, right? 2012 to 2016, 2015, 2012, 2013, yeah, do the little math there. 2012, you had your halving, 2013, all-time high, dip reset. 2016, you had your halving, 2017, all-time high, dip reset. 2020, you had your halving, 2021, we're going to have our all-time highs. We've already have all-time highs. And then we're going to have a big dip and reset. The question is then, what people will say is, for all these big companies, all these institutions, especially these old ones like a BNY Mellon, like all the ones that we just talked about, these guys are old style institutions, especially insurance companies. They're not going to sell it at the drop of a hat. So these will actually stabilize Bitcoin a little bit more. Will it stabilize? Pick your altcoin. No, they're not. They could, but maybe not. And that's why for my exit strategy, I'm actually, when this bear market hits, because it's coming, I don't think that uh, actually I'm going to be selling 50% of my Bitcoin and getting and holding on to 50%. The alts, 80% minimum. So that's just where I'm at. Now, the question then is, is it going to be another bear cycle like we saw in the last two, uh, four years and four years and eight years? Or is it going to last for years and years? I have no idea. But I can tell you this. Just look for this. Again, not financial advice. This is what I'm going to look for. Let me, let me say it like that. When you see a big hockey stick and you see the price go like this to the moon, you start to see like 100%, 200%, 300% over a very short amount of time. That's unsustainable. And right now, this entire market is pretty overvalued. And we're only in April. So I'm expecting this to go all the way to December like we had before. But look at August, September, October. Find your price points. Watch my video on exit strategies and just to do your own research and kind of formulate from there. Don't follow my advice to a T. It's just a small piece of things that you need to put together to find out what works best for you. And uh, that is essentially it for today. So I just want to say, uh, first of all, thanks for sticking with me. That was a little bit of a rant, but uh, that's what's going on. I think it's going to be a great year for 2021. Uh, I think crypto angel assets will do phenomenal. It just depends on how phenomenal. All right. So thanks for sticking with me again. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. It helps tremendously. Also consider subscribing. Uh, a lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. And uh, that is all. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. See you on the next one.